Next on BYU Sports Nation, the first four are done. What do we expect in the next four with Toledo, South Florida, Boise State, and Utah State? Speaking of the next four, how much of a jump do we expect Zach Wilson to make? And is that the key to success in the next four games? And why it would be dangerous to overlook the Toledo Rockets? BYUSN starts now. This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, September 26th. Great to have you with us. I'm Jerem Jordan, alongside a man who is excited about customized Alexa voice options, Jason Shepard. Yeah, the big news yesterday, I guess Samuel L. Jackson has, uh, has signed on to be one of the celebrity voices that you can talk to with your in-home connections. <laughs> That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, let's you know, let's hope it's clean. Um, I imagine they'll make an option that's They not. probably will make an option that is but, not. But celebrities doing that. And, and you brought this up this morning. Is What if BYU had uh, its own version? Yeah, like, like there's... Ty, Ty Detmer's see, giving you to... Yes. Turn left, Jason. <laughs> give me... Because give me, clearly one of the things we all... When you're in the car, you go the wrong way, yep. you hear recalculating. Recalculating. <laughs> see, Ty's the voice that I came up with immediately. Like, that's... In BYU history, in like voices, recognizable yeah. voices, yeah. he's the one. Yeah. You know what would be awesome? Like, Paul James passed away, but if you had like Paul James talking to you, yes. that would be awesome because he was like the voice of my youth, you know, listening to the games and everything. Maybe it's Gregor Bell and he's yelling at you to <laughs> change direction on the free. Oh, no! There it is. There, that's a taste of uh, what that's it when could be he, like That's when right. I went left and I was supposed to go right. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be great. Uh, here's what's on the show rundown today. Does BYU need more out of uh, quarterback Zach Wilson? We'll discuss. Uh, Jason's one-on-one, then Diane Gonwoloku. More or less, will the Cougars win three of the next four games? And assistant basketball coach Chris Burgess on two-a-days. They've started getting ready for the season. But first, today's headlines. Cougars fly out to Toledo today at 3 o'clock. They'll get there at 2 o'clock. They're going back in time. In preparation for a noon Eastern start on Saturday in BYU's second Eastern time zone game this season. Tight end Matt Bushman knows Toledo will pose a challenge. Uh, they, they put up points. I mean, they, they beat the teams that they beat, and they put up like 35, 40 points. So, yeah, they're a solid team. We can't overlook them. And we're really excited for the matchup. Game day coverage begins with Cougar pregame live with your boy, Jason Shepard. Allah. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. That's in the morning, by the way, on BYU Radio. Breakfast with Shep. And count, <laughs> that's the new name of it. And countdown to kickoff uh, beginning at uh, 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific on BYU TV. Jamal Williams and the Green Bay Packers host the Philadelphia Eagles tonight on Thursday night. Football Williams is coming off a team-leading 59-yard rushing performance against the Denver Broncos last Sunday. Williams was limited in practice this week with a neck injury, but is expected to play tonight. From carrying Jamal. the team. Yep, there, Jamal, the Jamal <laughs> fence. Number five, women's soccer looks to extend its 8-0 record tonight at Long Beach State. Cougars are outscoring opponents 22-1 to this season. Listen to the game locally on 107.9 FM and nationally on the BYU Cougars app. Number nine, women's volleyball begins West Coast Conference play tonight on the road at Gonzaga. Cougars are overwhelming favorites to win the WCC. The match begins tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 Pacific, and can be seen on the WCC network. Rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. We've belabored the first four games for a long time now. Those are over. For a lack of a better term, we've called the next four the next four. (laughs) Uh, At Toledo, at South Florida, Boise State, and at Utah State. So, Jason, what are your expectations for BYU football in the next four? Look, I think realistic expectations over the next four are three and one. Minimum two and two. And the only reason I give the minimum two and two is because of the injuries that BYU is dealing with on defense. I, I think that's the only way BYU goes two and two. I think three and one is realistic. And I don't know which one is most likely the one that if they're going to lose one, they would lose. But outside of South Florida, Toledo, Utah State, and Boise State, they're, they're not gimmies. Now, I think BYU is better than all three, all four. Ooh, but, even Boise State. 
I do. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I, and I've said this many times. I understand they're ranked 16th. I, I just am not buying into Boise State right now. Mm. I, I, need, I need to see more. And you're catching them in Provo. You're catching them with some new key players in, you know, quarterback. Who are undefeated. And I, I, under, I understand. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. not buying no, it No, I, I feel you. I, I'm not are you, buying Are you renting it? I am, I'm not renting it. I'm are lease option. I'm it? lease optioning to buy. Okay. I'm with you, three and one. Look, uh, here's the other thing. I, I agree with what Riley Nelson said yesterday, that while the next four teams are not easy, they, they don't have the players and the size and the speed or maybe the same skill level as the one, not that they're not good, but they don't have the same type of skill level players that we saw in the first four. Is Boise State better than Tennessee to you? From, You're hesitating? From a, from a talent perspective, Boise State is not as good. From, from an, a talent perspective. Better team? Yes, they're a better team. Okay. Uh, three and one. Yeah, I, I don't know which one could be a loss. If you went 4-0, oh, I wouldn't be shocked. No. Yeah, it's a different Boise State team. I do think that Boise State will be a favorite in that game, and that would be an upset, like BYU upset Tennessee. At the end of the year, we're going to find out that wasn't an upset. And then uh, USC, that was an upset sure. for BYU. Um, that was good. Boise State um, wouldn't surprise me at a loss, but if BYU went 4-0, oh, that'd be great. 2-2 two and two would be a major bummer. Major bummer. If BYU loses to Toledo, I know it's not a gimme, but if BYU loses to Toledo, that is a that is a uh, surprising loss for everybody. South Florida isn't that good to me. They've only won one of their last, I think, eight games or nine games or something. Utah State's tricky, right? Utah State's won two in a row against BYU, three of the last five. That's in Logan. Utah State's proven that they are a different program than the one that historically has shown up, you know, for a long time. And uh, that's going to be a more challenging game. I, I think BYU goes 3-1. and one. I don't know which one the loss is. It'd be a bummer. It, it, any of those is going to be a bummer for a loss. Because if BYU lose to Boise State, BYU's now 2-8 and eight all time against Boise State. This has got to be a team that beats Boise State at home. Yeah, agreed. And that's, if you can beat USC at home, you can beat Boise State at home. And I think this is a really good year to have Boise State at home. It is. Well, go and win up on the blue next year, too, because BYU has yet to do that. They've had a bunch of one-point losses. Topic number two, through four games this season, Zach Wilson is 86 of 137 for 997 yards. He has three TDs and three interceptions. He's also rushed 29 times for 105 yards and a touchdown. That's second on the team in rushing yards. Does Zach Wilson need to make a jump for BYU to win the next four games? He didn't until the Tyson Williams injury, in my opinion. Before that, I thought, you know what? No, BYU could kind of do what they've been doing, and they, I think they'd be okay in these games. They could go 3-1. and one. Now he has to prove uh, to have more of an impact on the offense. Obviously, we know what he can do. He ended the season on extremely high notes with a great performance, albeit in a loss against Utah. Um, and then, of course, the uh, Western Michigan uh, famous Idaho Potato Bowl was a, one of the performances for the ages, right? He entered the season with sky-high expectations against four quality opponents, and uh, he hasn't played great individually. He's had great moments, but I, I think he's got to play better now with Tyson Williams out. Through four, this is who Zach Wilson is. 62.8% passer, 63rd in the country, 249 yards a game is 47th, and I think that number is a little bloated because BYU has been behind in a major way in two games. Three touchdowns in four games is not available for ranking, right? That's a low number for him. I, I would hope he'd be two a game. I wish he was at eight-plus touchdowns right now. Three picks, um, 7.2 yards per attempt, 75th. And his pass efficiency is 127. Those are lower than last year, which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. 91st. Zach Wilson is 91st in interceptions with three in quarterback rating or pass efficiency. Certainly playing those four teams would lower those. So it's uh, we need to grade on a curve a little bit. I think the Zach Wilson will start to be more of the Zach Wilson we saw at the end of last year with this competition. So the question is... Does Zach Wilson need to make a jump in order to win? Does he need to? No. Do I expect him to? Yes, I do. And I expect him to make a jump for a lot of just common reasons. As we talked about with with Riley yesterday, and Riley brought up a great point, if you look at the number of games... Riley Nelson... What? Agreement. I, I thought he was fantastic he, yesterday. He, he dressed is, nicely. He is fantastic. I just want your ideas. But he, he <laughs> said that... Be, or, uh, the, Zach Wilson has not yet played a full game in terms, or excuse me, a full season. Sure. It's like 12 games. Right. That, that has not happened yet. So it just 
goes without saying, you would expect a, a player, specifically a quarterback, the more games you play, you would expect to get better. You would become more uh, comfortable in the offense. You would be comfortable with, with the people around you. So I do expect him to make a jump. And let's not forget, while formidable, these next four teams do not present the same challenge. Again, not easy, but not the same talent that BYU faced in the first four months. I think these next four games are a great opportunity for Zach to find a rhythm. And BYU doesn't need Zach to be a world beater. All he needs to do is run the offense, don't turn it over, and make the plays he has shown he is capable of making. Again, they don't need him to make a jump, but I fully expect him to make a jump. I think he does. I I disagree. I think he does with the Tyson Williams injury. Topic three. BYU is facing its first group of five teams Saturday in the Toledo Rockets, who are 2-1. and They lost to Kentucky in the opener. They blew out... Uh, Murray State, an FCS team, and they beat Colorado State by one yard. Uh, It came down to the wire. ESPN's Football Power Index has Toledo as a favorite. 56% chance of winning. That went up when Tyson Williams was injured, by the way. But Vegas has BYU as a a two-and-a-half point favorite. I get the sense after four Power Fives, Cougar Nation is expecting a win in this one. But Jason, are we overlooking the Toledo Rockets? Yes, and I, I say that in all caps. Yes. And, and, you need to yell, then. And by the way, when I say yes, I'm talking about fans and media. The team does not have that luxury. The team can't overlook anybody at this point. And let's be honest, it's human nature, after playing four P5s, to not look at Toledo from the MAC in the same category. Now, while I believe BYU is better than Toledo, this is certainly a dangerous team. Number one, you're on the road. And most importantly, Toledo's strength on offense is BYU's weakness on defense. We're talking about the run game. The Mm -hmm. Rockets are not Utah or Washington, but because of their run game, they are very, very dangerous. Uh, In the Toledo game notes, uh, it talks about what BYU has done this year. Um, And and then it... uh, it had this awesome line that I can't find right now, but it was like, but BYU is still a team to be reckoned with or something like that. <laughs> they're, they're totally ready for BYU. Yeah, I, I get the sense that, uh, yeah, be, people expect this win, uh, as a win. Beware the Northern Illinois from last year, right? Beware Toledo 2016 that almost beat BYU. They had to have a game-winning drive and field goal to win that one. So, yeah, it's, it, this is a sneaky game. BYU's got a bye week. They don't have to focus on anything in the future. They can sit there and think about Toledo. But there's a natural expectation that, okay, certain things are going to be a little easier this week than they have been, and I think that's okay. But Toledo doth stinketh to me on defense, Jason. (laughs) They're not great on defense. Points per game, 24.3, 59th. That's fine, but they shut out Murray State, so that bloated that number. Points per play, 94th in the country defensively. Yards per carry, 113th. They're the 18th worst. 5.3 5.3 yards to carry. You ready to run the rock with Emmanuel Supa and Lopini Kato or what? And then yards per attempt in the pass game, they're 68, 7.1. The BYU offense is going to wake up. This is going to be the game where they get 28-plus in regulation finally. BYU's been over 400 yards in one game. It was USC. And now it's time for BYU's offense to wake up. Can the defense slow down the Toledo run game is the question. Do we expect 11 in the box? <laughs> 11 in the box for BYU? <laughs> do we, no safeties? Do we just no, look, Guadani is not going to throw the ball. Now, as soon as we say that, they, the very first they, play will be play action. They won a game and scored 41 points on six completions. <laughs> completions yes. Six. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I, I expect BYU to load the box. Yeah, if, if BYU can slow down the rushing attack somehow and force Guadani to throw the ball, that works in BYU's favor. And BYU, yeah. that, that's exactly what BYU is hoping will happen on Saturday. 55-53 was the last matchup. Well, the only matchup, right, historically between these two. And both teams had NFL backfields. How about right. that? Logan Woodside and Kareem Hunt and Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams. I don't feel that's the case in this matchup. We'll see in the future. Kobach's pretty good, right? But it uh, should be a fun one. Question of the day. What are your expectations for BYU in the next four games? Let's get to the voice of the nation. This is the voice of the nation on BYU Sports Nation. At 86 WI Coug on Twitter, I think BYU needs to go 3-1 and one in the next four to, and win at least one of the rivalry games. It's true. Well, if they the go 3-1, they would, they would win, they at, would least win at least one. This team can't lose to both Utah State and Boise State. Have to start winning these rivalry games. Yeah, that's right. Kalani Sitake right now in his four seasons has one win against rivals, which is, which is really tough when you think about it. And it's one it's, of the main goals that the football program has set, is, right. is beating your rivals. Right. You play three a year, we're into the fourth, so it's, what, one and nine, I think, against rivals right now? So, yeah, certainly important. If BYU could go 4-0, and beat two of those rivals, oh, 
six and two. We're feeling very different about kind of where this season is going. And I'm interested to see what BYU teams uh, shows up. It's not a top 20 team that BYU is facing, right? BYU is having to go on the road, Eastern time zone, quality opponent. Early morning game. Early morning, which has proven to be tough, right, uh, for, for BYU and anyone that travels Eastern. So the matchup's interesting that way. Continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, will BYU hold the Toledo Rockets to under 240 rushing yards? Well, holding them under 440 would have been good last week for Colorado State. <laughs> and why does Diane Gonwoloku always have a smile on his face? Jason's one-on-one conversation with the senior quarterback. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Get ready for BYU at Toledo Saturday morning with us as Cougar Pregame Live starts at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Pacific on BYU Radio, and then countdown to kickoff beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific on BYU TV. This is BYU Sports Nation. We're simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Great to have you. Uh, If you want to watch it on demand, you can go to uh, BYUSN.com. There's also an audio podcast. Senior cornerback Diane Gonwoloku is one of the most versatile players on the BYU team. He's got four touchdowns, two on offense, two on defense in his career. That's more than a lot of the offensive players can say for BYU. Shep spoke about uh, stopping the run, leadership, being an internal optimist, and other topics in his one-on-one this week with Diane. Diane, I've actually said this to you before, but you always have a smile on your face. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Where does that come from? Have you always been that way? Man, I've always been a happy kid, you feel me? Like, when I came from Liberia, I was just, I came smiling because it's like, I'm living the American dream, so like, what's not to smile about? So are you one of those guys that regardless of the situation, you can always find the positive? Is that how you look at things? Oh, yeah. My, it bugs my wife sometimes, but I know that because like, I'm like trying to find the positive in every little thing, even if it's like the worst things. She's like, I know, just like comfort me. I'm like, hey, there's positive in everything. So like that's why I think that's how I go through my day, every day, through my life. And I want to push down my teammates too. But yeah, it's always positive with me. Well, then let's, let's look back on the, the, the loss to Washington. What positives can you take away from that game? Uh, I think, especially for, like, defense, I feel like we had, like, a little get-together pretty much, like, during the game, and we were like, all right, we didn't get turnovers, like, forget about the scoreboard, because Tuiaki came up to us, like, forget about the scoreboard, just worry about our game and, like, focus and keep playing, and that's what we did. Like, I feel like that was something positive, and we ended up getting, like, two turnovers after that, and so it was just, like, from the game, like, moving forward, I feel like one little mistake isn't going to define who we are, and we're going to keep playing to our hardest ability. In talking with some of your teammates this week, once again, and it, and it really doesn't seem to matter if we're talking about offense or defense, when things don't necessarily go the way you guys hope, it, it usually comes down to an execution thing. Is that where you guys feel things need to be cleaned up just a little bit, is, is the execution aspect of things? Oh, yeah, for sure, because coaches, they, they do everything put us in the best situation to be successful, and if we just do our job, it's on us. Like, we put it on us. We don't say the coaches did this, coaches did that. It's all on us. So if we execute, you see what we can do, like, against USC. We win the turnover battle, and... We get the win. It's easy, simple. How has this week's practice been as you guys get ready to head back out on the road to take on Toledo? Uh, we've just been like, the coach has been there supporting us, but we've been, as a team, like keeping ourselves accountable, just like having the scout offense go hard against the, the starting defense, the scout defense going hard against the scout, I mean, the offense. So just like accountability and going all out, like every practice with energy, coming out to practice with energy, and that's the thing that's going to help us in the game. If we, pull, if we play full speed at practice, it's going to go to the game. We're going to play full speed and be just fine. One of the things that you just touched on, Coach Satake all season long, and even talked about this in the offseason, talked about how important the leadership of this team has been to the success you've seen, uh, maybe not even just on the field, but you know, in workouts and things like that. How much has the leadership of this team, which I know you're a part of, how much do you think that has helped this team grow? It's helped, it's helped a lot. Like I feel like from the past years, we didn't have like depth like that, and this year it's kind of around the same thing, but with the whole – keeping us accountable for like teaching the younger guys like the plays and like making sure they understand like you see our young linebackers they've been stepping up no matter who goes down they can come in and fill in the spot and be just fine that's what uh, that's like an effect from keeping everyone accountable and you see that on the field we have the same with corners linebackers d-line o-line receivers the same thing so we his next man up pretty much and everyone's ready to play well, and, and to that point, I mean, because of injuries, guys have had to step up. 
I've got to imagine that, you know, certainly you never want to see injuries happen. You never want to have people go down. But knowing and having the confidence in these guys that when they come in, they're going to be able to do the right thing, it's got to be a huge plus for you. It is. It's just like having a vet in there. They know all their stuff. So it's like we don't the, – the skill level does not go down because all those guys are athletic. They all can play. They're all smart. And it's just the confident level to have it in there and have that mindset that you can go out there and make plays, and that's what they've been doing. Obviously, when, when people look at your season thus far, they're obviously going to remember the touchdown you scored and then the, the game-saving uh, INT. How do you think your season has, has gone to this point? It's been good so far. I feel like personally I can do more. Like I want to do more in life. Obviously, everyone wants to do more in the season, but it's like we still have a long season to go, eight more games, and I feel like everyone's going to step up a notch. Like the schedule does not get easier. It's going to get. We're going to play at the high level and continue to keep keep trying to put on points and stop teams from scoring. Yeah, and there does seem to be that maybe from the outside looking in that okay, well that first month is done. Now it's a piece of cake. You guys don't have the luxury of looking at it that way. You have to be prepared for every game. Yeah, every team is going to come in, want to score, beat us. It doesn't matter who we beat. Doesn't matter who we lost to. It's all going to be competition all season long and we're ready to beat whoever's in the way you mentioned that there's still some areas you'd like to improve what's what areas specifically do you think you would like to get better at uh just i feel like running to the ball even everyone is a team but i feel like if i run to the ball like everyone's gonna start running to the ball and that's where plays happen like i said like usc game i was just running to the ball and i got that interception so just like uh, keeping in shape and just being able to go hard on special teams and not take plays off, that's one thing I want to focus on, just not taking plays off and going all out in the ball and always got to think the ball's always going to come to me. What do you guys know thus far about this Toledo team? Certainly just looking at the stats alone, they're going to run the ball a lot. That's what they've done. What else do you know about this uh, this Rocket offense? Oh, uh, they're, they're energetic. You can see that. They're high tempo. Like They'll run, 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 and then once you fall asleep, they'll throw it deep on you, and we're ready for that. They run a lot of double moves, but... Like like I said, we're ready. We're ready to step up a notch and show everyone what we're made of in the secondary and that show our D-line can stop whoever is going to try to run the ball on us. We've seen the 400 yards, but that means nothing to us. We're just ready to play them. The defensive rushing numbers, I know, haven't been what you guys want them to be. Why do you think the numbers have been the way they are? Coach Satake mentioned that one of the reasons is because you guys have been playing some really good running backs. Yeah. Why do you think the defense to this point has not had the success you would have wanted uh, rush defense-wise? Uh, just, I feel like just the scheme, it depends what team we're playing. So it's like every team's not going to be the same scheme. We're not going to run the same thing against every team. So it's like it's depending on the game. doesn't matter what running backs in the backfield. It's just, we got to execute. It's on us. The coach, like I said, the coach put us in a good position to be successful. It's just us executing. Well, and, and you guys take pride in that. I mean, you guys see what the stats are, and, and you guys want to go out there and, and change that, right? Exactly. So when you head out on the road – you know you've got, you guys are going out because it's in the eastern time zone, so you're going to go out a little bit early and try and acclimate yourself. Everybody wants to know about what it's, play, what it's like to play that early in the morning. It's going to be a 10 a.m. Um, mountain time kick. Does that matter to you guys at all? Does it change anything for you guys? It doesn't matter. Like I feel like personally like we played two 1 o'clock games, and it's like if we wake up like at 7, it doesn't matter. We're early birds, and like we practice this, we train for this, and like, it's not a big deal. It's just going out to play another game, except the sun's out. That's all that is. What is your game day routine like? Do, are, are you the guy that likes to have a little bit of time to kind of go through a certain routine, or you wake up, you're ready to go? Both. If we like, if we have a night game, I'm just like, all right, I got time to chill, get my mind right, watch a little bit of film. But if not, like early games, I watch film the night before and get everything ready, get my stuff ready to pack, and then I'm ready to go the next morning if it's early game. So it's like I just adapt to it pretty much. So like on a game day, all you that's that's all you would do is watch film. You don't do anything else to kind of relax or get away from it. It's all about preparing for the game. Oh yeah, I'm just focused on the game. I told my wife, my family, like they all try to text me saying good game, and I feel bad because I don't answer some of their texts. I'm just I'm focused, body and ready to play. For you guys, what do you think is is the most important thing defensively for you guys to be successful on Saturday against Toledo? Uh, first, stop the run. Like you said, like they're a running team, so we're going to stop the run and then focus on shutting the receivers down. That's, that's the main thing. Stop the run, shut the receiver down. I feel like we have the guys to do that. Dine, great stuff. Appreciate it, and uh, good luck in Toledo. Thank you. Okay, that's Dine Gawaluku from practice earlier this week with Jason Shepard. Uh, perhaps the second-best NFL prospect on BYU's roster to Kairos Tonga? Uh, I, I would say yes, um, in, maybe with Matt Bushman yeah. as, as the other option. But yeah, I have. I can. Those guys are the top three. Yeah, probably. with yeah, Consensus without question. Top three. Diane has been so good, and having him back at corner has has 
been fantastic, not just for the defense, but for him as well. I mean, he's talked about how that's his that's the position he likes to play. Yes. Chris Wilcox injured. Yeah. Uh, Michael Shelton graduated. Yep. Troy Warner injured in the back. So that, that secondary has been pretty banged up. The leaders, uh, Dango Oluku and Austin Lee, two good players that have locked that down, which has been really nice. Our question of the day, what are your expectations for BYU in the next four games? At CL underscore living on Twitter. Four post-game locker room dance videos with improved choreography and better music. <laughs> Will BYU be dancing in the locker room if they win this game? It, this game is interesting because you think, oh, Toledo, that's a win. Not necessarily, right? BYU, if BYU can't contain Bryant Kobach, who rushed for 228 against Colorado State. Or Guadani. And Mitchell Guadani, who's uh, leading the MAC in pass efficiency. He doesn't throw it a ton, but when he does, it's effective because the line. Yeah, it's misleading. Like, one for else. one is, yeah. <laughs> Six for 15 yeah, wasn't right. great, but I know. Uh, it was enough to win. Continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, assistant basketball coach Chris Burgess stops by Studio B. Who's impressed him during the first few days of two days? And we'll play a little more or less. Will Zach Wilson throw more or less than two touchdowns on Saturday? We'll weigh in. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU women's soccer is ranked fifth in the nation. Looks to remain unbeaten when they face Long Beach State tonight in California. They will be hosting UC Irvine on Saturday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on BYU TV and BYU Radio. And tonight, uh, playing Long Beach State, you can listen to that one locally on 107.9 FM and then uh, nationally on the BYU Cougars app. Welcome back. I'm Jerem. He's Jason. Let's refresh today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Cougars fly out to Toledo today at 3 o'clock in preparation for a Saturday noon Eastern start on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. BYU tight end Matt Bushman knows Toledo is no easy foe. I think they're a good team. Um, they've they put up points. I mean, they've, they've beat the teams that they've beaten. They put up like 35, 40 points. So, yeah, they're a solid team. We can't overlook them. And we're really excited for the matchup. Game day coverage begins in the morning on the radio with Cougar Pregame Live, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. And Canada kickoffs on BYU TV at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific on BYU TV. Jamal Williams and the Green Bay Packers host the Philadelphia Eagles tonight on Thursday Night Football. Williams is coming off a team-leading 59-yard rushing performance against the Broncos last weekend. Jay Swag Daddy limited in practice this week with a neck injury, but is expected to play tonight. As mentioned, number five women's soccer playing tonight. The Cougars outscoring their opponents 22-1 to this year. That is incredible. Domination. Now, that one, by the way, was a penalty kick. Yes. So they have yet to give up a goal in the run of play. They are dominating right now. And number nine, women's volleyball. Beginning West Coast Conference play tonight on the road at Gonzaga. Cougars overwhelming favorites to win the WCC. The match begins at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Six Pacific can be seen on the WCC network. So top ten teams on campus. Number five, women's soccer. Number nine, women's volleyball. Number two, men's cross country. Number six, women's cross country. First time since 99, BYU's had four top ten teams in the fall. Pretty cool, right? Very cool. All right, let's play a little more or less. More or less on BYU Sports Nation. Presented by Bodyguards Protection for a Life Worth Living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. Let's bring in Ben Bagley to do the honors from the control room. hey Let's start here, guys. Emmanuel Super will have more or less than 85 rushing yards this Saturday. Uh, I will say more. Uh, I Number one, I have a lot of confidence in Emmanuel Isupa, but I also know the defense he's facing also can't stop the run, so I will say more. Yeah, I go, we want some more, we want some more. Toledo is the 18th worst in yards per carry allowed in the country, 5.3. By so. the way, I'm really excited to be able to debut my Emmanuel Isupa touchdown tweet. Which is? I've got, I've got a nice gift that I'm going to put yeah. out. Yes. You're so, not going to tell the uh, It's a little okay, tease. I've seen it. It's you a tease. Me. It's a tease. Very exciting, a la McKay Cannon. Yes, the, the cannon yeah. blast for McKay Cannon when yes. he would hit a three. It's along those same lines. Nice. Number yes. two. Does that have something to do with Seinfeld and soup? No, it does not. No, I was waiting for Not Seinfeld. Soup, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Question number two. Toledo will have more or less than 240 yards rushing against BYU. Ooh, I go less. Here's why. BYU's held its last two opponents one set to 171 and 187. BYU's giving up 215. I know BYU's banged up, but I think BYU's game plan is going to be good. I think the game plan has been really sound uh, for most of uh, the games. Obviously, Washington uh, ran all over BYU and threw all over BYU and punt returned and scooped and scored. 
Utah had their way with the turnovers. I think BYU is going to have uh, prevent left, 240 left. Look, even if it's 239, it's still less. And that's still a lot. It's still yeah. a lot, but I don't yeah. I don't expect that. I, I Look, I, I know the BYU's had its struggle stopping the run, but I, I think we see a little different uh, scheme against Toledo. And, and while Kobach is great, uh, he, he's not Zach Moss. And BYU isn't Colorado State. And BYU way. is not Colorado State. I, I expect less than 240. Okay. Uh, 269 a game right now for uh, Toledo. Number three. Number three, Zach Wilson will have more or less than two TD passes. I go spot on. I think it's two. I think he throws two touchdown passes in this game. Uh, I, I would lean on the more side of this. Yeah, that's where, I, since I won't go right on, I, I think it's definitely more than less. So I will say he'll go more, have at least three. Yeah, and, and he needs to break out. He has three touchdown passes in four games. That's it? That's, look, that's shocking. Look, BYU can score against this defense, whether it's on the ground or through the air. BYU's offense should be able to score. And we've talked about turnovers and the role it plays. If BYU can take care of the ball, they're going to be in business. Number four. Speaking of turnovers, BYU will have more or less than one turnover on Saturday. I'm going right on because I think there should be a middle option here. I think BYU turns it over one time on Saturday. Well, because I'm willing to make an opinion, I will say more. I do have an opinion. <laughs> I don't let the name of our segment dictate what I have to it's do It's the name here. of the segment. I know, but it, the name stinks. <laughs> it should be more, it, spot on, or less. Yeah, bodyguards would be fine with that. I think BYU turns it over one time but wins. This will be the first game where BYU... Gives it away, but and wins. wins. Yeah. Okay. Mm, interesting. Yeah, yeah, number five. It's not really part of the question, but it's fine. J- Jason, <laughs> I, I, as producer of the program and uh, author of this segment, I appreciate you not sitting on the fence. And yes, you're off welcome. The fence and you're sitting welcome. on one side or the other. Yeah. That's appreciated. Yeah, that's great. You're welcome. Last one. BYU will have more or less than 2.5 wins in the next four games. Exactly. Two and a half. Oh, my Just gosh. Kidding. More. BYU will have three or four wins in the next four. I, I believe that they will do that. Uh, I, I believe that a loss is possible and even probable. Um, FPI says that BYU is going to lose this game. Toledo, by the way. I believe BYU win, will win the game. South Florida is a win. Boise State and Utah State are the ones that are interesting to me. Uh, if we hearken back Whoa, to the hearken. first segment. Yes, I've used hearken and thus so thus far. This isn't a big word. But it still sounds fancy. <laughs> I said BYU would win three out of four. That would be realistic. So, of course. Hey, how you doing? That's awkward. Uh, I will go with more than two and a half. I will say three. Oh, classic. The uh, the BYU guys pick more in this uh, bunch of homers up there. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're, we're only half homers because this guy went spot on right in the middle. <laughs> two and a half wins for BYU <laughs> in the next four. Our question of the day, what are your expectations for BYU in the next four games? At dstott50 on Twitter. I thought it might be Terry Stott uh, for a second. Blazers head coach? Yeah. Probably not tuning in right now. Probably not. I expect to see who this team really is. I expect improvement on defense. I really want this offense to find its identity. It's been a while since BYU had an offensive identity. Also, it all depends on reaction game to game. If we're dialed in, 4-0 should be attainable. I I think, I don't know what percentage I'd give it, but I'd say there's like a 33% chance or something that uh, BYU would go 4-0. I think 3-1 is is, uh, probable. 2-2 and 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 3-1 probably your most probable. Like you mentioned, two and two would be a huge disappointment for this group if they went two and two in this. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, and I think they would view that as well. Yeah, I think I think the team themselves would view two and two as is falling short. Sitting four and four, you're going to get three wins. You get to at least seven. San Diego State a chance for eight. If BYU goes three and one, they got a shot at nine wins. When BYU went two and two after the Washington game, it was like, oh, nine. There's a chance for nine wins. Right. There's a chance. I don't see BYU running the table the rest of the way, but who knows? Maybe they'll uh, dial it in. All right, uh, continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up, a rise and shout out rugby style. Mm. And men's basketball assistant coach Chris Burgess on the Cougars' two days practices. The first one started like 6 a.m. There was this video at like 5.43 in the morning. Those guys are up and at them. This is BYU Sports Nation. This segment brought to you by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The best of BYUSN airs Saturdays at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on BYU Radio and is on the podcast feed featuring the best conversations and interviews each week. Our goal each week is to make sure that this show exists. 
because if there's <laughs> not good enough, the content. If there's not good enough content, they just don't have the show. They're like, well, there was no best, so uh, it doesn't air. We'll air something else. Our next guest is uh, an assistant coach with the men's basketball team in his first year at BYU. Practice has begun. His name's Chris Burgess. Chris, great to have you back in studio. Man. Thanks for having me back. Okay, to, uh, the the start of uh, BYU official practice was a was a video on social media yeah. at like 5.43 in the morning or something. I don't oh. even know who it was. Felt, er- was felt earlier. Who, who was, was walking? Yes. Yeah, I don't know who I was, was trying to figure it out, too. I want to know who was videotaping it, too. Who <laughs> I think it was Jake Curtis. Was, was it? The, Good for Jake. Yeah, he's, he's all he's in. He's the man, yeah. He was early. And, and, that's, early. and you guys are doing two-a-days? In yeah. football, this has been outlawed. Football kind of different yeah. than basketball in this. Yeah. But you can still do kind of two practices in yep. a day with basketball. We'll give him two practices, two days, and then we'll take a day off, of course, Sundays will always always be off, but really in the morning, we're coming in. We're either getting a bunch of shots up, you know, um, as a group and lifting. We're doing like some defensive breakdown shell stuff, and then we come back in the afternoon and we really get after it more on the offensive side of the ball. So it's been going well. The guys have brought so much energy the first two days of two days. Um, we got dudes who want to compete. Like it's 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 been really fun to watch. But after the first week and the second week, we kind of see how tough mentally these guys are because that's what two days is right it's going to test your mind test the fatigue and see if you can get through them because and that and that's the wcc tournament right and that's mm-hmm. that's march um, where are you at mentally so on tuesday during the media availability uh coach pope pulled his best ashton kutcher and uh, punked all of us in the media. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. and i mean hook line and sinker we all bought it i i couldn't see my own face but i know it was probably my jaw dropped when he he mentioned that the tj haas will be back next year <laughs> after having knee surgery now he quickly you know, yeah. changed that and said he, he'll be back in about 10 days how is tj progressing he's he's doing he's progressing fine yesterday he actually got on the court and did just really easy closeout drills slide drills at about 50 percent um you know when you have a scope it's just about time healing but also kind of pushing it a little bit where you get your body comfortable with kind of the pounding movement cutting and things like that tj's gonna be fine he's a gamer you know, he, he's going to get back. He's going to be healthy. We miss him on the court, but it's also allowed guys like Connor Harding to get some one repetition. It's allowed Blaze Neal, right, to get some one repetition. It's allowed Jesse Wade to get some one repetition. So it's good, right? Guys have to step up. And the same with Yoli being, you know, out the first nine games. It's allowed guys like Dalton Nixon, right, to, to be on that first five and get some repetitions playing with the first five. And so we're kind of seeing a taste of what our team is without, you know, two of our big three in Yoli and TJ out. Uh, Zach Selyus broke his foot yeah. on the Italian trip. How's his recovery? Good. His mustache is growing in nice. Oh. I don't know if you guys have interviewed or seen oh, that. Gosh. I haven't seen him. I have his not must- seen him. mustache is growing in nice. Um, he's still on the kind of scooter right now. The boot is off. He's in the pool up there at the SAB, getting a bunch of things in there. His his just he needs time to heal. But he's doing everything he's capable of doing right now, upper body, he's doing. Like he's I mean, I think he's put on a bunch of muscle just upper body because you know he's on the bike doing his forearm things, he's lifting and he's doing everything so much upper body. So he we can't wait for him to get back, but at the same time you don't want to rush him because it's a Jones fracture, right? It needs time to heal and you don't want to have any setbacks. We miss him like Zach he's a senior, right? He's a leader, he's a voice, but he's been great on the court helping some of these new guys, return missionary guys out just with his voice and teaching them on the sideline as they're coming off, right? And that is very valuable um, to our young guys, but also to Zach when he gets back in, he's already been talking the game right from the sideline. That's been nice. Now that the schedule is finalized and you can look at it as, as a whole, how do yeah. you evaluate the schedule? I think it's tough. I think it's a big time schedule. Um, you, you talk about some of the top teams in Mount West. Um, you talk about Maui, UCLA, and you know Coach Cohen is going to have them the toughest team in America. It's just his, you know, it's just been kind of the DNA of his teams. Um, you talk about at University of Utah, we are at Houston. So we know that this schedule um, is going to really push us and challenge us. And we're going to go through probably some ups and downs in adversity, and we're going to see how tough we are. And we can make excuses those first nine games, right? Oh, we don't have Yoli. and We can make excuses. Or guys can step up, and we can battle, and, and we can play together and come together as a team and see what we're made of. And if we do that, we're going to hit the WCC, hopefully in stride, ready, ready to take it over. And that's certainly the goal because there are fewer and fewer bids for teams like BYU yeah. as an at-large, right? And Dave Rose, amazingly, did it eight times, which is just insane, right? But like you said, given that Yoli Childs is out for the first nine games, and there is some, a lot of seniors but some youth, 
you probably want to try and win that tournament as your best option to yeah. get into the NCAA tournament. Is that an easier option than that large? I think opinion? all options are really hard. It goes back to Coach <laughs> Rose, how amazing that is. He did that. Yeah. Um, we want, I mean, we want to win every game, but we also want to grow and get better every game. Um, we talked about it all the time as a staff the last four years. We, we wanted to get better every single game. Even in you know the Dub CC tournament after round one, Coach talks about this. We want to be better the next round. And so it's, it's one of those things like we want to win every game. We want to give ourselves the best opportunity where the locker room's feeling good and confident that we go into the Dub CC regular season and the tournament feeling like we can beat anybody in, on the court that we play that day. Um, and to beat a team like UCLA or beat a team at Houston and to beat a Utah State, pick number one, right, win the, the Mount West, that'll help us. And so that's what we're getting ready for right now. How would you describe the system that you guys will run this year on offense and defense? And yeah. how, how have the guys been at picking that up? Really good. We feel like we've got three guys who can really score it in and, and, and TJ, Jake Toulson, and Yoli. Um, we like to run a system where it's really spaced, allow our shooters some creativity. But you got a guy like Yoli who's, I think, I really mean this, one of the best short rollers off of ball screens in decision-making, whether it's finishing at the rim, finish with a floater, or finding the open man because he draws a ton of attention. Short roller, you mean he gets the ball quick so, off so the roll? So he then... sets a screen, he rolls, and they give him kind of a quick pass, and now kind of like mm. Draymond Green has, where Draymond Green gets to make all these decisions based mm. on what the defense is getting him. Right? You see Draymond kind of make the corner pass. He's got a floater. He throws that lob pass right to um, keep on Looney. And I think we have that with Gavin. Right with Dalton, things like that. So, so who's Steph Curry? Is the real question. Steph, probably TJ and, or Jake. And Clay, right? <laughs> My job's easier if we got Steph out there. Um, so we'll have a space, we'll have a lot of creativity. We're gonna have a lot of ball screen stuff. I feel, I feel like we can really score in the post. I, if you look at analytically, Yoli, he's over a 1.06. It's like the top five percent in all of college basketball last year. In what? In the Points. post when he gets when he gets the ball in the post. He's points one of the per possession. Points per possession. He's wow. like a 1.04, 1.4. It's, it's amazing. Mm. Like, I actually don't even really work with him. I just watch him and learn from him. That's it, like coming in here. Mm. So we feel like we can get him different, different catches on the block as well as short rolls. Um, we love Jake coming off screens, coming off floppy action, you know, wide pin downs. Um, we love TJ coming off handoffs, ball screens in the transition. We want to play fast. We want to pass the ball ahead. We want to run, run the floor. We think we have the two most athletic bigs in the conference in Yoli and Gav. Like whining like a deer, and you know, so we're gonna take advantage of that defensively. You know, we talked if you're talking about junking up, we've talked about different kind of one three one stuff, two three stuff to really take advantage of Yoli and Gavin's length kind of in the top or on the side. Man to man wise, we'll be pretty solid. Um, you know, whether we switch one through four on ball screens, whether we front the post, you know, we're not overly aggressive there, but we want to find a kind of a happy medium of what we want to do. But main thing for us in Coach Pope's system is we're gonna really scout and we're gonna take away tendencies that we want the non shooters to take shots and we want to take away the shooters. That's that's been kind of what we try to do the last four years and I, I know that's going to be something we're going to do this year how do you develop this group yet prepare them for life without Yoli for nine yeah. games because you want to have him a part of everything but he's not going to be in yeah. the first nine so six, the first seven. two practices we've kind of put him on the second squad or the red shirt squad you know because we also have Richard Alex Barcel and Wyatt Lowell sitting out so it's a pretty been, good group yeah <laughs> so it's been on that group so they're pushing kind of the blue team or the first squad Right. And so we're, we're doing like we've got our first squad out there who we think potentially will start. Right. And Yoli's not on that group. So they're Yoli's getting life with us not to play with the starters. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's learned that part. And then our guys, our starting guys are getting to getting to go against Yoli as a backup or, a, or a, you know, the gray squad mm -hmm. every single day. And so that's how our guys prefer. So Jake Toulson and TJ, when he comes back or Connor Harding or Jesse, they're play, out there not playing with Yoli right now. Like, they're playing against him. Is that how you'll do it until yeah, he plays? that's how we'll do it until he plays. Okay. That's, that's how every time we, when we put together a practice plan, you're always on the gray squad. So that group is getting used to getting being Getting used to playing together, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Okay. Every single day, and twice a day. How is Yoli taking to that? <laughs> He's been good. He's been good, and he wants to push his guys. But that gray squad is pretty good, right? <laughs> uh, the Barcelo is... You guys are going to, the Cougar Nation is going to love Barcelo. <laughs> well, He's got a red shirt this year. Yeah, Looking we, forward they're going to love him. Year, they're yeah. going to love this kid. Well, yeah. may, kid. well yeah. and maybe, maybe, maybe that's the answer, even though he can't play this upcoming season. But you've mentioned a couple of guys that impressed you, Yoli specifically. Who's an under-the-radar guy that maybe people aren't talking about that's impressed you so far? Connor Harding. Love him. Defensively. He can pick up. Full, like in Italy, I was, I was really surprised 
how much ball pressure he was given full court, turning guys. And he's been our one guy. You know, we talk about three things for each player, and one has been the defensive intensity where he's brought it every single day. And we've been playing it out some one, right, with TJ out. We've been playing out some one, playing out some two, playing three. So he's a utility guy who can play a lot of different positions. He's shooting the ball well. He's, he's, got, he's a big guard, right, so he can make those passes off of ball screens, off of floppy action where he sees over the defense. Um, I just love him on the defensive. And then Dalton Nixon would be the other guy. And everybody, like Cougar Nation knows about Dalton. Like, he plays so hard. He always talks about you can't measure, you know, someone's heart. That dude goes after every single rebound. He can play him at the five. He can play him at the floor. Four. He hits, like, he hits everybody who's open. And then he can score it around the rim, right? He, he's, he's just, he's just a, a guy that you need to have on a successful team. Mm-hmm. He does all the little things and he has one agenda, win. That's all he cares about. That's great. And uh, last but not least, Saturday, a BYU alumni. Yeah. Tell us about uh, what's going to happen. Yeah, so uh, alumni have all been invited to come watch practice, and we're going to do a dinner afterwards, and it's going to have a nice little program. <clears throat> We've invited everybody. We're hoping to get... Um, we're hoping to get at least 70 alumni from all generations, including coaching staffs. And our program is going to include some trivia stuff, and we're going to have prizes, and they're going to have gift takeaways. Um, you know, we've done some things, and, and we're going to have five or six guest speakers. Um, so we'll have uh, from all different eras. So we'll have some 90s guys, some 80 guys. all get up and kind of share a quick little two-minute uh, memory. There's no way it's two minutes. <laughs> Depends what era we go. If we do the 1970s, we might be there for 30 minutes. But if we do a 2000 group, they might be a couple minutes. So we're looking forward to that. We've we've invited, we've touched um, touched a couple guys to you know say something and talk about something BYU basketball, including coaches. And it's gonna be fun. If you guys know Coach Pope, he likes to go big, and we're we're gonna. You know, we're trying to we're trying to push the envelope and what we're allowed to do, what we can do. We're gonna have a really fun highlight video, but we just want our guy, our guys, and the alumni to understand that we're trying to build on what they've created and they've started, right? And we want our guys to be around NCAA tournament guys. You know what it took to win, right? We want our guys, and we want the, all the alumni to feel invested where they talk about it, and they all want to come back and invite the guys who didn't make it this year to come back next year. It's it's our goal, and it's it's really important to us. That's awesome. So if people need to contact and want to sign up, how do they do it? Um, contact uh, Nate Austin. If you contact the Twitter, the Nate BYU Twitter. basketball Twitter, okay. please, it's, it's six to eight. Just come to the annex. Like, right. you know, everybody's invited and they have a plus one. So awesome. we're excited. I love that we're talking basketball. I cannot wait yeah. for awesome. basketball season. Okay. Love it. Well, thanks. Appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Okay, awesome. Coming up, two top ten teams are in action tonight on the West Coast. That's next in the Cougar Whip Around. And the nicknameless football player is leading the country in something. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation. Thanks to our guests today, Diane Gonwoloku and Chris Burgess. A show on demand via podcast uh, at uh, BYU TV and the BYU Radio apps. Let's whip it. Whoops! It's time for the Cougar Whip Around. Football takes on Toledo this Saturday in a matchup of a two and two team versus a two and one team. BYU being the two and two team. BYU beat Toledo back in 2016 on a last second field goal to go up 55 53. Countdown to kickoff begins at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific on BYU TV. Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio starts at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. Also, senior Talon Shumway named a semifinalist for the Campbell Trophy, which recognizes the best football scholar athlete in the nation. Shumway has seven receptions for 70 yards and a touchdown this season. Cougars in the NFL. Jamal Williams of the Packers. They host the Eagles tonight on Thursday Night Football. Williams coming off a team leading 59 rushing yards against the Broncos on Sunday. He's been limited in practice with a neck injury, but is expected to play tonight. Soccer. Number five, women's soccer looking to extend its 8-0 record tonight on the road against Long Beach State. <laughs> the Cougars have shut out the last six teams they've played and have only given up one goal all season. Wow. Game time is at 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 Pacific on BYU Radio. Volleyball. Number nine, Brigham takes on Gonzaga in Spokane on the road tonight on the WCC Network. Today's rise and shout out. One goes to former Cougars Sean Davies and Paula CK, who started at scrum half and center respectively for Team USA against England today in the World Cup in their first game. Unfortunately, it didn't go the way of the Eagles 45 7 to England, who's very good. But congratulations to those two. And shout out to Sean Davies, especially. My old roommate got to know Paula CK really well. Uh, calling the Utah Warriors game. So pretty cool to watch those guys. And I got up at 445 you to did. watch that game. Yes. I watched the whole thing. Yeah, my rising shout out's going to go to Jake Oldroyd. No nickname. Uh, leads the nation in field <laughs> goals made with 10. Awesome. What's even more impressive, Jake is tied for the sixth longest field goal made 
54 yards. That's the sixth longest made in college football. And second uh, in BYU history in that 54 yard. Pretty cool. Our question of the day, what's your expect? What are your expectations for BYU in the next four games? The Elite Voice of the Day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, goes to at Donna Say One Al on Twitter. Difficult to say until I see how they react to the last game, but expecting three and one, losing a close one to Boise State. Still drinking the blue Kool-Aid. Mm. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and the Facebook. Use hashtag BYUSN. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, no time. Hello, Jerem. Hello. For Jason, I'm Jerem. <laughs> Shout out to Wally Joyner. Nice. We'll see you tonight on the radio for BYU Women's Soccer and Eastern Time. Go Cougars.